Yo, what's going on, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome in to another episode of the Rising Lights podcast. And Fien is now informing me that he's located a bug with my overlay. What is the bug? Let me see if I can spot it as well. Oh, no, yeah, the overlay at the top is always, to begin with the podcast, is always, uh, like, my stream one anyway. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let's get started. It really doesn't matter if it is the actual overlay. It, it's going in a minute when we uh, get on to yeah the orange glowing effect is not centered okay uh god god knows what i yeah all right anyway let's get going <coughs> since fiend has uh, sort of derailed us a little there the song we came into today is another part of the plan as usual and it was what i deserved so let me this one Haha, <laughs> see, wicked. I uh, I took some advice from a video I watched earlier from Harris uh, earlier this week from Harris Heller, which is basically, you know, your numpad, you can turn it into a mini stream deck. Anyway, I digress. Part of the plan, uh, we had Rafe Bound on, um, the podcast like what four weeks ago? Wait, no, six weeks ago. Holy sh. Yeah, it was episode four. Oh my good god. We've been doing it. We, we're on episode 10. <laughs> Double digits, boys. All right, so <clears throat> uh, we've got a, like, a command in the chat if you want to use estimation point T P O T P, is obviously st uh, short for part of the plan. Uh, it basically brings up their entire discography. If you want to go and listen to them on Spotify, <laughs> then, you know go and do all that good stuff um you already heard them speak so let's get into the introduction uh firstly kitsune say hello is my co-host Mr. Cephalopod. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, I had the audio muted for oh, you too. <laughs> really? oh. You did this. You did this the other week. Oh, oh, last oh. week went down without a hitch, but <laughs> <laughs> every week, so other than oh, right, okay. go we again. We have this fine from the start. <laughs> Everything from will be start. fine. So we can by episode twenty. We... <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> we'll just confirm that Trep has something against invertebrates. We'll just go with that. <laughs> um... <laughs> um... Yeah, so uh, so from the top, uh, I am uh, Saint Cephalopod, or Ceph, or just Cephalopod for short. Um, I know uh, if you were watching, was it three or four weeks ago when Woody Calf was on? Um, I'm another clan admin from the Clan Truth group. Um, so good, good bunch of guys. Uh, if you want to find me, uh, it looks like Trip has my Twitch up. Yep. Uh, it's st underscore Cephalopod. Um, it's the best way is either there or uh, Twitter is probably the best. Uh, it's at Cephalopod uh, ST. Uh, I also have a, a link tree on there that has everything in there. Um, yeah, I was looking at that earlier. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. One of the biggest things I do is um, I, well, I guess, first of all, I'm a very, very casual streamer. Um, I know they say the hardest thing to do is press the button, which is very true. So I probably only stream maybe. Uh, 10 times a year. Um, but when I do, I am always fundraising for Extra Life, uh, which is just a, it's a nonprofit that raises money for the Children's Miracle Network. Um, all the all the donations and everything goes through the um, Children's Miracle Network hospitals. 
Um, and I have my donation set up just to go to their whatever they deem to be the highest priority need. Yeah, that's, I was about to. Brilliant. I was about that's to brilliant. say, like, um, to be honest, you are the first. Yeah, you're the first, like, non-affiliate that we've had on so far. Um, but yeah. the fact was, once I heard from Witty, as well as obviously me and you talking in DMs, once when Witty was on, um, and you basically expl you're also the first person that's sort of approached us and said, well, more so me, and said listen i want to be on at some point um that's part of the reason why i turned around and went yeah we need to have you on because not only are you you know just doing it to sort of help out with you know charity drives and stuff like that but i mean affiliates don't tend to have the biggest of communities anyway but mm -hmm. It, the more we can sort of as a co collective the whole point of the rising tides raise all ships hashtag rising ships you know thing that we've got going with okay mm -hmm. bring more eyes onto your fundraising efforts like great to be honest and then obviously nice. whilst we're here sort of get your opinion on a few things going on within the twitch mm -hmm. and destiny um sure Verse, yeah, if you will. Yeah, no, yeah. No, I was yeah, gonna I... say, sorry, sorry, one sec. I was gonna say, like, the f when when I looked at you, like the profile and all the the panels and everything, the the first thing that jumps right out to me is because because it's like a, an actual panel rather than like text and stuff was that extra like fox, and I was just drawn straight to the logo because I I recognised I've seen it in other um mm. in in people who I've followed who when they've when they've done the the art fundraising and stuff. It's a really, really good cause. Um, the people that actually. Yeah. I, ha I have just noticed the spelling mistake. <laughs> oh, I'm sure I. Okay. <laughs> under your <laughs> under your rules, you you put you go for. I'm far from a pro gamer, but you've got I'm for a pro gamer. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, I mean, that's also true. So. You know, Brilliant. Pro gamers. Make I sure love they it. Have dinner too. Uh, no, but it's the fact that it says it. So be prepared for some silly mistakes, and then you know there's there's one like right in the paragraph. Right there, yeah, true, true I love it. It's brilliant. Right oh. Excellent. I I can almost claim that was on purpose. Um, yeah, you, you you totally should. If anyone else brings that up, yeah, just claim it was on purpose. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. All right. So one yeah, of the and... things we asked uh, Witty, and I'm sure you was in the chat for it as well, was, um about like clan truth uh mm -hmm. obviously he sort of covered the main part of you know history what they're all about um do you want to sort of give a quick synopsis yourself just for anybody that might be sure. seeing this episode but not have seen any of the others mm -hmm. yeah sure i can do that yeah so clan truth is uh uh we're up to five separate clan rosters in the game um and each one is pretty much full. Uh, the Discord server is up to, I think, around 800 people now. Um, I joined in Season of Opulence, and I think that was when the Discord was around 200 people. So, um, you know, in that in that amount of time, we've grown, you know, by four times the amount. So it's uh, it's been growing steadily. Witty does a really stellar job with kind of running everything, and um, he's, he's a really solid guy. Um, I've been, I've been really happy with the group. I've been with them um let's see i think i went through a couple different clans before i before i found them um but yeah they're really good uh really engaged um lots of people to help you know we're always doing raids there's kind of we're not really focused on any one part of the game you know it's just kind of you know come as you are like there are definitely people that do more pvp there are definitely people that do more raids um i myself tend to play solo most of the time um but you know i'm active in the discord and there's always people around uh, it's a good group. I'm a big fan. Um, I do have links to the uh, to the clan Discord um, in my link tree. Um, I'm sure Woody has the links to them on his uh, his profiles and stuff as well. Mm. One thing I love about like because I'm in the clan Discord, your clan truth Discord as well, from when I used to play on Xbox and was in the same clan as uh, Kitsune's in right now. Um, <laughs> yes, I will keep pointing out that you're still in. 
um, Legion of the Sea. You're gonna you're gonna point that out every episode. Yeah, until pretty, pretty much. Aren't you? Pretty much. Uh, just because you know they're predominantly Xbox and don't really have anybody that plays on PC except one guy, and it has since sort of stopped playing Xbox mainly on PC. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I love that, like, the announcements, like, I go into announcements for the, like, community Discord, D2 every day, probably my favorite one to use. It's, like, you've got your D2 uh, announcements, which is, like, bots announcing, you know, this week's Bungie, etc. Server announcements, which is the admin sort of announcing different things that are going on within the server. Um, and I, I, like, I love those. But I love that uh, Witty sort of does his own little this week at mm-hmm. Bungie's within the announcement thing on the, the Clan True Discord. So he's like, um, his most recent one is like, you know, glad to see so many people taking part in big team activities and blah, blah, blah like utilizing mm-hmm. the fun glitch, you know. And, yeah. and then covering different aspects of the game so everybody has a little bit of information they don't need to don't feel the need to sort of read um the twab or like every tweet that destiny puts out bungee Mm -hmm. in general whatever it may be because if they're in that discord they know they can get like a a short synopsis uh Mm -hmm. uh, straight to the point and i i actually really like that yeah, yeah, he does a good job with it. Um, definitely, he does a good job keeping things light too. And you know, like you said, mentioning the the twelve person shenanigans that are going on right now, and um, you know, just trying to keep people aware of that. Uh, one I've of seen the a, things that I've seen a lot of people calling doing. him, uh, and mm-hmm. I think Witty was the first one I actually saw for it. I don't know whether it was him that started it or what, but uh, a few people have, since I've seen Witty call it that, uh, been calling them clown car raids. <laughs> and I really like yeah. that term. It's quite funny. Mm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It, it's um, definitely what it feels like. Yeah, uh, I <laughs> asked Witty about that when I when I saw that, and he said that he'd seen other people using it. Mm. I think that some people it goes back to like True Vanguard or something. But uh, I was talking to your kind of brother um, about it before, and he thinks it might have come from sort of like an offhand comment in one of the like the twabs or the state of the game or whatever mm. um where whoever the the community manager had written the piece i just sort of said sort of like at the end it was like we were we these were designed for like three or six people we weren't expecting the clown car or guardians to rock up ah that makes sense and it just sort of i remember really yeah i, rem- I remember there. reading that actually yeah <sighs> yeah it's a lot of fun I know one of the biggest benefits of that is I know what he's been organizing, uh, uh, I think at least two or three at this point, um, doing clown car divinity runs. Yeah, uh, just I've as, seen those yeah. as well. Since, it makes a lot yeah, of sense. Just, yeah, yeah. Just Some of the like, puzzles doing, are right. Like, all the, right, mm, difficult. Yeah, the puzzles. Yeah, the puzzles you still have to do a six, but it just makes the, the raid itself so much more fun and easier with 12 people. Like all the bosses are. Should well, be one, phase one thing that comes to mind is after the harpy boss, you've got mm-hmm. that one puzzle where you don't need. You could. It would be easier with more people, and and then the the next puzzle after that, like as you're going up the stairs after jumping through what most people call the washing machine, you can either mm-hmm. jump through the washing machine or you can go all the way around. When you go all the way around, harpies. Um, supplicants spawn and blow up yeah. and can kill someone and that usually wrecks um, the run if it kills somebody. With 12 well, people, if... you don't have to worry about that because <laughs> one of mean, the... Yeah, you've, you've got another team of six keeping the path clear for you. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think it's mm-hmm. smart. A lot of people that are doing that, you know, more power mm-hmm. to them. I think need yeah, to I get think... as many people through as possible. So my my favourite mm-hmm. uh, to see for those was the DSC. Um, but specifically, anyone who was doing the clown car DSC with chaos, because mm. you know chaos theory one is like you're not really calling out who's got what. You just sort of if it's available, someone grabs it and just yeah. does the job. But when you've got a lot more people sort of all looking out to see when it's available and who, because you've got like three or four different terminals, 
depending on you know which bit you're in and stuff. Mm. Who's gonna grab it? It's just <laughs> amazing. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's a Lara. Yeah, definitely, <clears throat> definitely adds more to the chaos mode in DSC for sure. Yeah. So one thing we did actually like sort of cover last week with Solidus Lee, and the week before with um Sai Ford um was something that you have got in your rules as well with regards to you know racist sexual homophobic um so Sai we sort of said you know with regards to labels making sure people have the right um labels you know he she they them whatever it may be uh, and then last week it was more of a uh me and Lee sort of discussing more so and Kit obviously interjecting where he could because me and Lee talk forever. Yeah, Um, you do. (laughs) Sort of about like how Black Lives Matter needs to be uh, more, what's it, more represented by not only the black creators within the twitch community but also the white community like creators that are in, within the community uh and show that it you know we're, sol- we're solidified in the fact that you know mm-hmm. what we basically came to uh agree on last week was that you know what the whole black lives matter movement stands for which is that all lives can't matter until black lives matter um mm-hmm. so I just thought of that because of the fact that you've got the, you know, the racist stuff, which most people mm-hmm. do. But um, yeah. I actually saw someone earlier this week, I think. No, yeah, earlier today, maybe. Uh, my friend Yasin, I think, raided him. Um, and basically, they said they had it as a, as a BLM is not a trend. And I think that's something I'm probably mm-hmm. going to like go with going forward after the conversation we had last week with Lee and then like I said the you your rules with the racist just reminded me to sort of mention mm-hmm. that <clears throat> once again uh one of the things that Anubis who me and Lee both sort of talked about last week and asked uh, his opinion on things with regards to how we can better represent you know BLM as white creators um was he his word was consistent so in essence of consistency we mentioned it last week we'll mention it again this week there we, we are we've uh, we've mentioned it um mm-hmm. so you are in veiled truth if i'm correct yes, yes on, i see it on correct. the social section uh and mm-hmm. then witty's in veiled uh, corrupted, um, if I remember correctly. When he is uh, exiled. Oh, is he exiled? There, yeah. see? Yeah. But he did say that you lot sort of <laughs> hop rosters for, you know, triumphs and stuff anyway, so mm-hmm. you're all one yeah. clan anyway. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, and that's kind of why we started using the, the clan truth moniker, just to because we are five separate rosters in the game, but, you know, everybody is all in the one Discord. We yeah. kind of all share information and LFGs and group and everything. That kind of reminds me of... Um, it wasn't two weeks ago we had Sai on. It was the week before. Two weeks ago we had um, Five and Otis on. And yeah. uh, for anybody who doesn't know, you probably if you're in their communities, you would have seen it because they both put out uh, announcements in their discords. But they're shutting their personal discords down because they're opening up their clan discord to you know the communities ah, so that's cool um i think that's all going nice. down this sunday there's going to be sort of a similar sort of thing uh with regards to what truth does and just wipe it are going to be mm-hmm. doing so. okay yeah, let's get there <clears throat> cool go on go for it <laughs> uh so just uh one thing with the big discord like it's it's definitely a big a big benefit for especially folks that are not um you know like 
I guess for like myself, like I'm not focused on content creation. Like I, I do it because it's fun and for the charity fundraising. Mm. Um, but being part of the big Quiet and Truth Discord, like is definitely a really helpful for that since I don't do a lot of content creation. I, uh, in a way, kind of have not my own community, but I can help to leverage that community by putting my information out there. Yeah. The same, you know, and, and uh, for other charity events too. Like I, I did the game to give with Witty last year too. Um, there were a handful of us that did it for Clan Truth. And um, yeah, the, the big uh, community discords are, they're definitely a lot of fun, bring a lot of benefits. Yeah. Like I said, we've got, um, it's not a favored Discord because that's the clan I'm in now. Um, but it is run by one of the favored, like, top dog and the founder of favored is an admin within it uh, mm -hmm. which is d2 every day uh which is more so um sort of pc but there are console players in there as well but one of the things that we're looking forward to and i imagine you guys in and there's witty in the chat now with the granddad love email mm -hmm. um <laughs> nice i imagine you guys are looking forward to it within the clan truth discord as well <clears throat> is the crossplay is not next season but the season after mm -hmm. yeah yeah for sure like right now we're just um well not just we're <laughs> pc and xbox um i'd say probably a little bit more so xbox than pc but yeah once crossplay comes in then yeah it'll definitely open it up even more and um i'm i'm definitely looking forward to that i'm excited cool uh so we'll move on to the twitch stuff the first one i've got Go in kit is the one the tweet from SideQuest about the cancel uh, yeah. subscription thing. So if you want to, okay, yeah. So uh, if you, uh, I think it was within ten minutes. Um, so if you subscribe, yeah, to within someone, ten minutes. Um, and for whatever reason you didn't intend to, um, whether it be like you've accidentally done a tier two and you wanted a tier one, or you've done a tier one and you wanted a two, or you've done a tier three and you've got no, I can't afford that, I need to do a tier two, whatever. Like, plenty of reasons why you would want to sort of rescind a subscription. Um, just going uh, from from here, from just having the, the, the new item in the list, was I just wanted a shout out. That's not a good, in, no, that's, that's not a very good reason to go, oh yeah, I want to cancel a subscription for this. See, that's mm -hmm. the, the, you said that a whole lot calmer than I was. That's fucking <laughs> bullshit, and it's why people have been pissed off on Twitter since you know this was discovered. Like, even even if that wasn't an option, anyone who was of that mindset would just choose one of the other options. Yeah, like mm -hmm. the way the way I look at it, like. A subscription isn't a way to get shouted out because you can do that with like bits, you can do that with follows or whatever, or you can just like at the person usually, unless they're like really big. Yeah. But the way I look at it is a subscription is like a another sh another way to show support. It'd be like continued support rather than just okay. This is right. Here's so, some bits. It's like a one-off. So here's the thing as well, as side quest here says, you know, Twitch are doing the best to protect streamers from trolls. Also Twitch. Here you go, trolls. Here's another way to troll the streamer. Um, and yes, she confirmed that it worked. Um, and I'm glad I just said she and got that right because I didn't even look over here for her for her labels. <laughs> um, I wouldn't be good, would it? I just been men just mentioned no, no, the no. Uh, the labels thing and then mm -hmm. just assumed. Anyway, um, and it's not just a debate option. Uh, she got a refund, like, basically as soon as straight away. Uh, it, it's always good to have a refund option. You know, it's great. As you said, Kit, you might click the wrong amount of subs. You might click a three to six month option when you're in instead of one. Um, you might, you know, as you said, click the wrong tier. Uh, <clears throat> but why feed the trolls? Like, this is literally just a, yeah, you can click this one if you're a troll. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Uh, and as she said here, it's not so much that it's um, giving people a refund. It's that this exact, like, within 10 minutes thing is with the, it just wanted a shout out, is, is causing issues for, you know, streamers. People could, like, go into 
kits chat um and gift five subs and then turn around and go uh, uh, you know what no kit just gave me a shout out saying thanks brother you know you gave me five also, subs so uh follow up sorry uh once we finish talking about this follow up if you scroll down a bit there's a twitch support uh response yeah um sort of you know gifting sub bombs as she said she had friends that, that have got gifted sub bombs and they've refunded so you and not a lot of people will have a regular, so like for argument's sake, I'll use my own as a, an example. Uh, I got my first Twitch payout, bearing in mind I got affiliate in September, I believe. I got my first Twitch payout in December. Yeah, there's what, two, three months to sort of build up the $100 mark that I needed. Um, and then I was at like 150 so I ended up getting just a little bit over 100 quid um i have no problem like i sort of pointing that out we're now in march which if you look at like that projection i should be pretty close to a payout right yeah i'm about halfway there so when you when you think about it that way people get gifted a sub bomb they're like oh you know what they do quick maths in their ma in their head and they're like oh cool i'll get my payout this month and then they go to look at their analytics like two or three days later and that uh sub bomb has not like gone through because it's been refunded and then the reason is because i wanted a shout out like like you said Kit, there's other fucking options there a lot of tw a lot of uh streamers nowadays are, are doing channel points yeah you know, i'll get a shout out sort of thing um I don't think I actually have that on mine, although I have considered doing it. Um, yeah. To go yeah, it's to the follow-up thing real quick before we discuss mm -hmm. it in more detail. Uh, Twitch support says, thanks for kicking off the conversation. Limited refund window was originally introduced to projects against accidents and purchases. Translation reasons were added in 2018. So this has been going on for two to three years depending on where in 2018 they added it. Um, to capture why viewers are seeking refunds, note gift subs cannot be refunded in this way. So they also have an immediate response to that message as well. Um, I'm just going to read that now. Uh, so they said, this info is used to improve the subscription experience yeah, for creators yeah. and subscribers. We didn't intend to make it seem like we're encouraging this behavior. And based on community feedback, we're removing the shout out option. So it, it doesn't, get rid of the issue because obviously if people are going to do that and try and be trolls and stuff they'll just pick one of the other options mm. but mm -hmm. it doesn't what i find like condoning it what i find great as well is not just streamers that are chiming in on it i mean she does yeah. if i remember right she does stream as well but it there's a se senior artist at bungie who chimed in uh nine hydras uh said oh my god there's a this is definitely what just happened to me the other night. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Like, I'm, it's really good that they took it out. I, I mean, part of my day job that like I'm a healthcare systems analyst. And one of the things I do with my job is design um, a system for data input. Um, I guess not from a very high level. And so I don't really see a need why they, or why they needed to have that option besides if they're trying to collect data but anybody that has more than a couple brain cells could you know if they were doing something nefarious would probably be smart enough to click another option anyway so it was less likely to be flagged on yeah. by twitch's side if, if they were auditing it so it it really does seem so essentially what you're saying is if they were trying to use it as a okay if you click this we're gonna know you're a troll and we're gonna ban your account yeah, yeah, exactly. Then, and like you say, people mm -hmm. who are doing it for nefarious reasons will be smart enough to probably click away. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's It definitely seemed like a really uh, odd choice. Like, it, I don't really see the purpose of why they would put it in there um, besides trying to collect data on people that were not smart enough to actually, like, choose it. Yeah, maybe. But well, at least it's been sorted. Um, it's been addressed. Yeah. Which is nice. Mm -hmm. And I've can't, been calling her side quest say. when in actuality her, her name is Tiny. 
tiny. Uh, yeah. And each side quest is a team shooter. I, I don't. Mm -hmm. Personally, I don't. Like, <laughs> me putting favored, then a little slash intrepidus one would just. Yeah, it just doesn't. Uh, I don't but like then, that sort of layout. But this, but... By, the, by the same token, you've got people who have, like, um, sponsors in there. Yeah. Sort of like how you have, like, title sponsors in F1. Like, you'll have someone who's paying to have their brand as part of the team name. True. Uh, so next is the, since you said branding, you know. Aha, nice, nice segue. We didn't really <laughs> need it because we were still on the Twitch and we were yeah. on Twitch topics today. Twitch uh, topics, yes. uh, Twitch branding, safety, score. Yeah. Um, so Lots every of now code. and then, Twitch makes updates to their internal API endpoints. Um, there, there is lots of code because this guy does cybersecurity um, stuff. Um, as he's, well, he's a CS student and he works on open source projects when it was free and stuff. Um, but he's noticed when he was going through um, some of these changes that Twitch have made um, that they have new um, new endpoints to tr to poll and, and check and, and get information um, that seems to be for ad targeting reasons. So it's like what kind of ads will run on certain channels so obviously if you've got uh, like this you've got the manual rating so you'll have like people who are twitch affiliated mm. maybe not paid by twitch but like they'll be sort of outsourced by twitch for another company and be like hey we need you to go and check these channels out and stuff and then come back with like a, a one-liner or a quick description of like what they've got um you know whether they're in like good standing whether you know like they're way down for like copyright or whatever or if they've been banned before and stuff and just see sort of like how good is not not how good is a stream or a particular user how applicable are they for additional features or ads that pay higher yeah because to be honest i saw brand safety thing i think i've just seen an article from like game rant or somewhere um where it's just like a picture of you know the Twitch logo on a phone in front of a background that is Twitch, and, and I saw like brand brand safety score, uh, you know, sort of affect how uh, grades, you know, basically what he says here, which grades how brand friendly every streamer is based on things uh, like chat behavior, etc. They didn't actually like go into um, other things that this guy does in his tweet, but. And I saw that and I was like, well, I swear in every fucking stream. So at least, you know, <laughs> a thousand times. So I'm probably not very brand but friendly. So the thing is, you also have <laughs> your stream set to mature most of the time, if not all of the time. All of the time. And you would have the flags in your account to go, okay, is caster over 18, is caster over 21. Which I'm actually 28 tomorrow. Because for anybody who's tomorrow, watching yeah. this on YouTube or listening on the podcast, um... actually, I think I was doing. Was I doing Fridays for the yeah. audio? So if you're listening to the podcast on any of our six platforms, which I will mention later on at the end of the uh, the, the podcast, um, uh, if you're listening on the day that this was added, that it became available, uh, congrats! You're listening on Trap's birthday. Hey. Or well, probably depending on like how long it's been since because time zones and stuff whatever yeah <laughs> anyway the point being uh yeah this is recorded on the the thursday uh typically kit will put them up on the friday for the podcast platforms and then you get a couple of days of sort of exclusivity if you will uh on those platforms before it goes up on my youtube channel uh on the sunday um but yeah like it. I only mention that because of the fact that obviously, like I was saying, I mentioned it's my birthday tomorrow. So, you know, I'm going to have tomorrow's title as literally like, it's my birthday. I'm 28. Like, if they don't catch that in their bloody algorithm, then, and I automatically tick the two 18 and 21 boxes, oh, then I'd be uh, very much surprised. Okay. Um, change plans. What? Um, not with that. Both of the Twitch topics today have been addressed. Really? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> um, uh. 
Yeah, scroll down. If you if you can see there, show show this thread. If you scroll down to the bit where there's red, um, in the two days, two and a bit days since, um, the stuff that was added to their GraphQL API, their internal, there, it's been removed. Ah, fair uh, enough. Hopefully, hopefully not a permanent change caused by the unjustified backlash from people completely misinterpreting that this was simply an ad targeting score. Because it's probably not just for ad targeting. So they yeah. get metrics on like how many of... Because it's easier to just like... Not have to recalculate things about 7,000 times when you're doing graphs and things, which is what the GraphQL... Yeah, and obviously... And then you would have... Um, we had the graphs the other week where they were like transparency report. Yep. That's probably going to be used in it as well, to some degree. Mm -hmm. um, which, you know, we want them to do more of that sort of thing, so let's not, like, get on their arse about it. Like, yes, they probably could use it to change how ads are, are, are used on the platform. And that, I'll admit that was the first thing that came to mind with me, because you look at the data that's in that and you go, well, of course you could use it for that. Um... Well, since they've both been addressed and we basically covered them, let's move on to the Destiny stuff, I guess. <laughs> Which is uh, the meat yeah. and bones of this, because... There's the meat and bones of today's episode, yeah. yeah. We've got a lot of Destiny stuff. Because of the fact that um, mm -hmm. during our conversation where Seth here sort of ex explained to me that he wanted to be on the podcast at some point, um, let me see if I can get your exact word in, uh, that you would be interested in chatting. Uh, but you'd hardly call yourself a content creator, but you enjoy, you love ju discussing the game and especially how it is for new players and solo players. So, um, yeah, like that's m the main reason for having so much Destiny thing. But then also there was quite a bit that went yeah. on with Destiny. So. There was quite a bit going on with Destiny, yeah. And uh, I had, I had is, a look, yeah. there wasn't an awful lot else so, on Twitch this week. With so, going, with stuff going on with <laughs> Destiny, you know. Another great segue here, the crit. Kit, you're going to love this one. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> Keitel, the, you know, the, the big bad empress of the Cabal, took over the Destiny Twitter account. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been amazing. I, um, I'm a huge fan of this one. Yeah. I love it when these things happen. For one. It's great. Yeah, so for one, as we we did have, uh, I think, Savathun took over it last year during <laughs> Opulence. Oh, yeah, no, not Opulence. Uh, during arrivals and sort of gave a little um, message out, oh, I if I remember that. correctly. I, I read somewhere I'm, I'm or I heard something. I, I think I think it was um, like Bife or Mylan or one of the, like the Destiny news uh, YouTube channels that I watched that sort of pointed it out that once this had actually happened, it might have even been someone we're going to get onto in a bit. Uh, Paul Tassi might have even been his uh, YouTube uh, yeah, channel that mentioned it. Um, basically, he, they, whoever it was, said um, that yeah, we had Savathun take over, sent out a little message, uh, which then led into story beats with regards to like arrivals, etc. Or it might have been Shadow Keep, I can't remember. But anyway, um, and they wondered whether we're going to get something similar with. Well, uh, title, but I think Savathun was maybe for like a day. This has been for basically the entire week since reset. Um, and some mm -hmm. of the interesting things that have come out of it is um, people f at first people were saying, you know, Kyle, sit, step on me, sit on me, uh, or whatever. <laughs> like, and to one person who said step on me, she turned around and said, "I'm the Empress of the Cabal. You're already beneath me." Which was quite entertaining. Um, then mm -hmm. this guy, uh, this was also covered by My Name is Bife in his recent video discussing the law and ha what potential implications this could have. Um, what we're what we've got right here. Um, yeah, this one's a biggie. This uh, crazy, uh, this guy with the at crazy writer guy said, uh, "Yeah, and you thought a single assassin could take out Zavala, cute lady? You're about to have a lot. How?" How many god killers gunning for you and sort out your affairs? And then she basically just responds with, if I wanted to kill Zavala, I'd look him in the eyes when I did it. Uh, and a warrior deserves no less. And then his, you know, thing back right here is, she's huge on honor. Um, the more he thinks about it, the more 
uh, he believes it wasn't title. Um, and to, to go to that end... <laughs> I like his last sentence there. <laughs> yeah, uh, so she's like, when... Kab- so it all started with this. She, uh, Ka- Kaito, uh, and I'll say she, you know, because it's the Destiny game account, but it, you know, they're talking from Kaito's perspective. It's in character, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Guardians of Legends, Guardians of Killed Gods. So that's obviously why he mentions the, the fact that we've got so many god killers gunning for her. Um, and then, as he says, um, she's done some thinking. Let me go back to this. His last sentence, yeah, is quite funny. You didn't do this. Slowly, as if uh, he was in a death, yeah. dust field grenade, which is yeah, quite funny. He's, 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 he's edging mm-hmm. slowly towards thinking you didn't that she didn't do this. Yeah. she didn't call on on, on that. And so. to the, to that end, I go back to the beginning of the season um, cutscene, and again, my name is Bife. Mentioned this in his video. The scions, when Zavala said no, the scions raised their rifles and were ready to shoot. She waved him down. And, yeah. So if she wanted him dead, he's dead. Like, she didn't have to wave, him, wave them down. She also then turned around and says, I'll meet you on the battlefield and I'll sharpen my ceremonial dagger. Yeah? So if she's going to want him dead, she's going to do it herself. You know, they're going to meet on the battlefield and she's going to kill him herself. She's not going to send a scion to assassinate him. Um, so running theories that Bife came up with is it could be Callus trying to get us to kill Keitel, um, because obviously she's after she's after him, out for blood sort of thing. Um, and it could be uh, Omslot, which is one of the Scion sisters from Season of the Dawn. That because for anybody that doesn't remember lore wise, they there was four sisters, Scion sisters. We fought three of them and killed them. Well, I didn't because I didn't take part much in that season because I thought it was boring. <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> law wise, killed three. Of yes, them. there was there, we killed three of them, and then season of the worthy, where we had, you know, three months of, oh God, the Almighty's coming, and then two hours of, wow, it's really coming. <laughs> and 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 probably about ten minutes of haha it exploded and now it's landing behind the tower. <laughs> um, that was all like a plan from on from onslaught to try and wipe the guardians out and try and wipe out humanity in revenge for killing her sisters. Uh, so here's another that's another potential plot point is that she is using her influence. Um, that's the theory one of the theories even that. Bife came up with. Um, she's using her influence within the old Red Legion to say, here, you go and assassinate Zavala. Um, and an important, like, lore tidbit is to watch the cutscene, listen to it very carefully. Uh, Zavala sort of may mention he notices a certain someone, uh, but I won't. And I know there's one or two people that I know that are a couple weeks behind and won't have seen that. I, I'm one week behind. Um, yeah. But given all the context clues and last week's lore page thing at the end of the quest, uh, I know enough to piece two and two together and not... Well, let's, put it, let's put it this way. Mm-hmm. For anybody who hasn't, who isn't like up, bang up to date with regards to the quest, the weekly quest that we do for the war table, uh, I will tell you this. I have one character that is bang up to date, and funnily enough, it's my titan, that are in my warlock main, that's kind of, you know, and that used to be a hunt main. Kind of weird that my titan, <laughs> which is technically my third character, is the one that's most up to date. But I digress. Um, so, I've seen the cutscene. I saw it as soon as I logged in on my Titan. But as soon as I logged in on my Warlock, before I logged in my Titan, I didn't see it. So I'm assuming it is tied to you have to have the checkbox ticked 
saying this particular character has done, um, you know, week four or whatever it is last week. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he sees a certain someone. I'm not going to ruin it to for anybody who hasn't seen that just yet. But as Kit said, if you pay close attention, you can sort of put two and two together. Yeah, and one thing I wanted to mention too, like just to step it back from the the lore discussion itself, like just the fact that um, you know we have a community manager or social media manager. Um, I know you had kind of mentioned this in the notes you sent me beforehand. Yeah, um, just like it seems like they're having so much fun with this, like having Keitel take over the Twitter account and be interacting with, like having the character interact with the community is so much fun, um, and and like. It feels awesome, like really engaging for the community, like um, you know, and like they did with Sav I think with Keitel, it's a little bit more than what they did with Savathun in mm. Season of Arrivals. Um, but like it's, uh, it just uh, it makes me feel really hopeful, I guess, if they're able to you know mess like just like play around with their characters, not take everything super seriously. Not that Bungie ever did take anything too seriously before. Well, here's the um, other thing. But I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, to go on to that point is with regards to you know having them interact the the fact that obviously there was the whole step on me uh thing that i mentioned <laughs> uh it's, it's you've got one here hard. where yeah you've got one here where paul tasty sort of um you know goes there's like a little bit of a she says something she goes do you think sabathun is a type of gun and then, you know, she responds to Paul Tassi. Paul Tassi says, you know, thanks, love your work. And then he re quotes the tweet saying that, you know, Sabathun's it. He was just saying the Vanguard never replied to my tweets, which is quite funny. Um, to which somebody said, you, you might tweet the wrong Vanguard. And then uh, at true Vanguard, which is quite funny as well. Yeah. Uh, and then she quote tweets his tweet where he quote tweeted her and says, I do not spin half truths. When I offer to respect you, guardians. Uh, mm -hmm. So she's not just like you could. They could, with you know, just having the fun and having her take over the account, put out the structured, you know, what I've got up on screen now with regards to Eris could turn Savathun into a gun. Um, the the thing we covered about led guardians of legends and guardians of god god killers. Um, your commander is fighting against those who could be allies. You know structured um tweets that are obviously planned you could just have her do that yeah you could just have the community manager the social media manager whoever's running the account doing that but the fact is that like you said they're going extra that extra step and making it more interactive mm -hmm. it's making it so so much fun yeah it, it's making it look a little less like a sort of marketing exercise and more sort of like um an ARG. Yeah. Or exactly. Somewhere you can go where like because it, it it's like building the world up mm -hmm. without actually being in the world. It's like bringing things into ours. It's the yeah. similar sort of thing as to like when you see people like posting things then you've got particular brands reply like sort of tagging other brands and, and doing stuff. It's like it's that that sort of thing is that people like that yeah, exactly. You know, it's that sort of thing that gets people talking about it, gets people sharing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. Like, how many people would be talking about, like, yeah, I want Like, to the point that I've just like... noticed on your stream, actually, <laughs> um, that wasn't there earlier when I looked at um, these things when I was putting them in the dark, in that if you look at Paul Tassi's username on Twitch, not the, the display name, not the not, not his at handle, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's down as Paul not a cabal, cabal spy, spy. Tassi. Yeah. <laughs> like. Which has only been changed recently, as you said. Um, so, mm -hmm. and we know, you know, Paul Tassi has had some, you know, sort of time with the developers to face, you know, kind of like we've got bigger streamers, partnered streamers that are um, within the Destiny community that sort of go out and play test things a couple of years back in destiny one with the house of wolves one of the key things that is always remembered by most people oh, is that they flew please, please, please. they flew uh, professor broman out 
um, to the Bungie studio and he play tested that and it was, you know, essentially him showing the developers how to play their own fucking game, <laughs> which was quite <laughs> funny. Um, but yeah, like, I believe that after these couple, you know, back and forths right here, that one of the community managers, if not like someone high up in uh, Bungie has sort of reached out to Paul and said, you know, obviously not on the record uh, or maybe on the record, but under NDA here, this is sort of put, put this in maybe an article or in your Twitch na Twitter name or whatever. Um, and then other people will understand it later on sort of thing. And he's probably got like some sort of insider information as to what's going on with this whole, you know, Kytel taking over the Destiny account. I would assume, not saying he has, he might have just done that off his own accord and, and like as a bit of a, I, I, a laugh. G but... Given the timing, I would think he's like done that of his own accord because he's added like all the back and forth and everything. And I can't remember mm -hmm. if it was him or if it was someone else's response, but like um, someone replied to one of the exchanges and was like, so does that mean you're canon now? <laughs> yeah, and um, Bife actually, I think, tweeted um, saying something along the lines of uh, I'm trying to decipher whether this uh, Kytle taking over the Bungie Destiny, the game account, is canon or not. I need this, not, <laughs> not only for my sanity or something along those lines, but for my career. <laughs> It was it was quite like it was quite funny. I, I'll see if I can find the tweet uh, on the, my stream PC whilst we're going through the the next couple of topics. Yeah, if you could just jump into the uh, actually the next one on the list works. Um, while we were quickly talking about uh, people knowing things and uh, the exchanges between different teams and and what's what's going on and everything. Uh, this one here, yes. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So the, the tweet just says, if you get this, please be honest and actually fill that out. Um, so there were emails sent out to people who were registered for the Bungie user research thing, um, which I managed to identify from the icon in the top right. Um, there's a survey going around to those people. Um, they want to know, have, you be, have, 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 have people been impacted by cheating and how um, when playing Destiny? And it's sort of, it's, it's a more formal approach to just like, doing the shout outs on twitter the twitter that you see and like you know occasionally you've had like one or two people um who are on the development team or our community managers just like you know sort of saying oh we're, lo we're looking at this and then you know having other people reply um and i think this is a good way to do it because you'll have a lot of people saying uh all sorts and then you'll have uh, extra conversations going on from there and it's hard to extrapolate information from that Whereas if you got it like this and you just go straight to the people who you know are like, okay, these people want to give us information. Let's ask them for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I found the um, the, the by uh, tweet. He said, okay, now I just need to know if Keitel's tweets are canon or not. I need it for my job. Oh, wow. That was a <laughs> thought I just had. Uh, how wonderfully ridiculous life can be. To which yeah. Paul Tassi actually <laughs> responded, as someone in the tweets now, I can definitely say yes, they are canon. To which somebody else responded with, patch notes, changes. Paul Tassi is now canon. Cabal, <laughs> Cabal, Cabal found out about social media. Uh, to which... Um, to Bife's uh, respond, like we, Clan Redeem responded with, great. Now, the only canon things we've done is kill Riven and ask Kyle to step on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to which somebody responds with, uh, way to go, slow clap, emote. Uh, the only thing you guys had to do was save us. And here you are, obsessing over a space turtle's feet. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's... Um... Quite a funny thread, so if you have Twitter, go check it out. <laughs> Obviously, everybody knows who my name is, Bife is at this point, but if mm -hmm. not, sh search yeah. Bife and I'm sure you'll come up, and it's B-Y-F. <laughs> <laughs> Destiny 2, Lord Addy for life. Yeah. Damn straight. 
But yeah, back to this. Uh, long as you said, Kit. Long story short, just to get us quickly back into it. They're asking about cheating, uh, whether people have been impacted by it, and you know, using the feedback to sort of um, try and see how they can approach. Like, yeah. Either, either, either. Obviously, obviously, they know it's an issue. We've a lot of people have made a vocal that it's an issue. They're, I think this, they're... this, this is a very formal way that they've gone. Okay, we're approaching this now. Tell us. Yeah, and I think part of it as well is. A lot of the people that will have signed up for the, uh, what do you call it, Bungie? Uh, user research. User research. That's what the UR icon is in the corner. Yeah. Um, will be, you know, streamers, like content creators in some regard. Um, and typically will either be just below average, average or, you know, god tier at PvP. And yeah. so, obviously, cheaters are going to be more in the realm of god tier, but your casual players are uh, in PvP, like myself, for instance, may inc may run into one or two in like play playlists because it's not you know skill based. Yeah. Although I still have my own inklings as to there being a hint of skill base there, but never. <laughs> um, and just to go back to this, yeah, twit, uh. Holotide, who tweeted this out, YouTube, Holotide, and Twitch, Holotide. So, yeah, he's definitely some sort of creator. Yeah. And, like, it's not a necessary tweet to make, but it's sort of, like, a good one to have made, because it's making sure that people who, like, are signed up to that are remembering to check their emails for it, mm -hmm. and maybe seeing if it's gone to spam or whatever. And then those that aren't... Asking for those that aren't survey. sort of signed up for it, no, Bungie are el like attempting to do something about cheating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a good reminder for me too. Like I was, I think I had signed up for the user research stuff quite a while ago. I remember doing one mm -hmm. survey. Um, it was oh gosh, it was a while ago. It was more about just kind of like in engaging with the current content at the time. I forget what even what season it was in. Um, but it was it was a pretty simple survey. Um, so it's. It's really great that they do this stuff with the user research. Um, I I totally agree with what you're saying. Like uh, with Holotide tweeting it out, hopefully, you know, a lot more people in the community will be aware of it. Um, I don't remember it being something that they really advertised all that much. Um, uh, no, they didn't. Yeah. Uh, it took me like three minutes of searching, and I'm normally pretty good at finding things. It mm -hmm. took me about three minutes of searching to find that they even had a user research program. Yeah, I think I heard about it from uh, PAX West. Probably, oh gosh, that was probably 2018. I went to the bungee table, um, and the you know whoever was staffing it at the time told me about it, so I went and signed up then. Yeah. Hmm? Okay, well, we'll from move on the, to uh, the mundane but necessary things. So something a bit more fun. Um, nope. Are you just going straight <laughs> down the list? Uh, bungee players stomp an an alien ship oh, to yes. death. Yeah. There we go. Or as I put in the doc here, <laughs> Guardians tweeting troop transport like a bounty castle. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's that awesome. I did move a couple things around in the doc as well. Yeah. As yeah. to how they sort of relate them. <laughs> so yeah, as you see here uh, so, in the little clip video, 12 Guardians got there into is the Nightfall. Video, um, if, you, if you watch... If you scroll down and watch the start of the video just to see like how they set it up. Yeah, 12 spicy boys are a fallen <laughs> aircraft designed to fight and transport alien pirates to fight to the death. There's no one on the war side. We're killing the ship first. Oh, it's Bife. <laughs> Bife's in the video. Wait, the ship. Jump up and down. Yeah, this is I love, like this is one of those things. Kind of it looks like a clown car. It is, uh, and um, just like some of the random shenanigans that the community can find in the game. Like, like I, love I, I actually remembered about this, and I went looking for it to try and find a tweet or an article about it um, mm. because I'd seen I can't even remember who it was. I think it was like Katie or someone. Um, but they were doing DSC and their team, you know, when you're doing the end of the space walk. Yeah, they would do it. Yeah, I've seen that. They did it there. They did it there, yeah. And because cause there was one person, like, was, was partway through and was just watching them just all fall down slowly. 
Planet Earth's great. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so yeah. <sighs> it brings me back to obviously, I understand they've got to take the glitch away with regards to GMs because it will trivial fire them. Um, which GMs are, for anybody who's not remembering the timeline of the season, they are due to be released on Tuesday uh, this week coming. So next reset. Um, and that's what that also coincides with what was it was it now three one one two something like that but there's a there's, there's, there's a, a patch, patch for it as well yeah that's basically mm -hmm. taking the 12 man stuff away uh which i've heard apparently that nightfall this week you can't 12 man anyway you it because it kicks people out um if you try and the max people have managed to get to stay in and stay connected is nine uh, without any, it causing any issues, so. Oh, now if only this was the um, if if only Sabbath and Song was Nightfall. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Somebody actually made said joke. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um. When I can't remember who it was, I was watching somebody and they were doing a twelve man raid and they were like, and in fact they just no they went in and did. It might have even been when we did the favored uh twelve. Like, well, it wasn't the favoured, but the majority of the team was favoured. It was like six, seven favoured. and then and allies. But, but it was it was <laughs> a D2 every day. Um, yeah. 12-man, like, raid. Uh, Karma and Anne, both from favoured, needed their catalyst for um, Dead Man's Tale. Uh... And so whilst we was waiting on a couple of people to get, like, on the game, loaded up and all that. It was like, fuck it, we're going to do the master thingy. And there was nine of us that went in. And I think, I think it was somebody then turned around and went, this is how they went down as a squad of nine to Sabathune's song. <laughs> 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 which, was, uh, which was pretty funny. But, um, yeah. Like you said, if only it was still, well, for one, still around, and two, if it was the, the Nightfall this week. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I do like how, and I've, I'm forgetting the example, but there was another time in the past too where there was a bug in the game that didn't seem like it. Well, I guess this one seems like it could break some of the like mechanical structures in the game. But Bungie realized where the community was having a lot of fun with it, and so they're just like, you know what, we're gonna give you a week or two, like go nuts, and then we're gonna fix it. Well, like, here's the other thing, you know, and people have people have said this about the twelve person activities. Double Nightfall rewards were a bug. And then mm -hmm. they made them a, you know, every so often An thing, thing yeah. within the game. Mm -hmm. And they've said, you know, they've tweeted, we see you're having fun with this. We'll see what mm -hmm. we can do, essentially, is what they've yeah. said. Like, I'm paraphrasing, but... But, I mean, we, we did... None. Uh, I mean, we specifically did did mention it. Uh, one of the episodes, I think, was it like episode two, maybe three or something. Um, but I mean, as a community, we did call that call it out and stuff. Um, way back when people were bugging, trying to load into the tower and bugging into the strike. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember that. There was sixteen people in that. Uh, it was just like, well, clearly there are. Systems you know, in place to handle systems multiple. Systems in place to handle multiple. Yeah, a lot more players than we currently can. To be fair, here's a here's a here's a thought. Would that have something to do with crossplay? Because you think if they're trying to inc incorporate crossplay well, in the, two that's seasons, the thing as well, actually, is if you've got you've got to connect the platforms, you've got, you've got, connect got a bigger servers. player base. Yeah, you've got to connect the servers. You've got to look at the different platforms for players connect to the one server, sort of thing. You know what I mean? It yeah. could be that's what the 16... I know, I've only just thought about it now that we've actually got a date, essentially, for crossplay. Cross yeah. Is that's what the 16-person bug could have been? Is in the API somewhere, the matchmaking system that Bungie used, they've got it to where it's now... It was looking for... Because if I remember correctly as well, next season there's going to be like betas and stuff for crossplay if i remember reading that correctly in the club 
or state of the game or whatever is where the uh, cluster? Yeah, that'll probably be with the user research group or with specific game modes. Mm. So but... things like, okay, this week we have this specific strike. If you launch this strike from the directory, it'll match across platforms yeah. or whatever. But there's a, there's a thing. Like I said, that could be where that came from. But um, I'm hoping, for one, that they do do like 12, even if it's, you know, okay, here's VOG when it comes out next next month, next uh, season even. Here it is. Uh, the bug has gone away because obviously it's going away next week with GM. Um, here, here's the, the VOG. Here's the day one race. Six people do the challenges, blah, blah, blah. Um, but next week on reset you're gonna be able to do it as 12 people and it's gonna be a separate a separate game mode for Ooh, argument's sake okay yeah i could see uh, that sorry i've just i've just read something particularly nice um well for me at least anyway um the twab is now out um if you don't have, already mm -hmm. have that open i will just switch scene so i can get it open yep uh, i noticed it pop up in discord so i just clicked it um, but there are some update previews for patch notes and things that are going on, uh, on not just Tuesday coming, when we know there's a patch, but also the Tuesday after. Ooh, okay. Um, so do you want to cover uh, the... And we have the result for the dinos versus monsters thing. Oh, I didn't even vote in that. I thought we had a lot longer. Neither did I. A lot longer no, to apparently, vote. But... Apparently we had a week. Got that. I mean, if, uh... <laughs> If you didn't vote Team Dino, I'm gonna to have to sign off right now. It's, I mean, it's well, neither of us, so neither of us voted just, at all. So, wait. but we were going to vote. <laughs> neither uh, of us voted. I was gonna vote for Team I Dino. I couldn't decide which to vote because obviously you've got different aesthetics for different characters. And also, I looked at it. I was like, am I even gonna use either of these? Because I'm really liking the Celestial set that I've got on at the minute. So, like, yeah. would I ditch that yeah. in favor of using either of these? And I was mm -hmm. looking at it, going, <laughs> no, no. Okay, so earlier we mentioned Paul Tassie. Um, uh, here we go, one of his articles. Yeah, so... Uh, the, currencies. Yeah, we've got the currencies. I semi-agree with some of these. I semi-don't. Um, dark fragments I agree with. Uh, the charges with light, no. Let us have more, like... Like that, I think. Keep those as long as you keep the space. Yeah, like if that space gets faulted, then obviously they go with it. Well, the or thing, the thing I was gonna, the are, thing I fine. was gonna think say is, they should stay as they are. Um, and the fact is, if you put it down to a single tier, then there's gonna be no challenge whenever you have a big group there. Yeah, no, there really, really isn't. There's uh, barely the any tier, challenge tier as it one is. is barely but... any challenge with a normal fire team, yeah. Well, uh, now, tinch... I mean, when it first came out, there was a bit of a challenge because obviously there was light levels and stuff. Yeah, tinctures. Uh, I could agree with. Yes, give it as uh, as a mod for the Dreaming City armor because you know there was the old. Um... And that then does give anyone who doesn't have any of them a reason to chase them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, phantasmal cores. Yeah, I can kind of get behind phantasmal stuff. Him of desecration, I can kind of get behind. The pure matter lenses? No, leave it because you might not. See, no, not that one. Is no, not that one. Sorry, the rain ma in general. Rainmaker. Rainmaker and finest yeah. matter weaves were the ones. Sorry, I was like, no, yeah. leave leave them alone because they actually are useful. Well, the, the pure is, matter lens get, you, is. I have a like a hundred of these. Just not touch those. They're fine. Yeah, here's the thing as well. Like I have like a hundred of these, and. Do I ever use them? No. Do you know what happens to them? I drag them on dim to the vault. They're not even worth me loading into the tower to put in my vault. I just use dim to drag them to my vault because they're pointless. <laughs> Who the uses weapon tele telemetries to rank up the to, to gunsmith? Like... No one. Yeah. Everyone uses weapon parts. Yeah, because everyone's mm -hmm. got weapon parts. I don't right now because I've spent well, them all trying to get a true prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. But you will. Yeah. yeah. 
mod components. Well, they're so easy to get too. Yeah, like the, yeah. the telemetry. I think I have like four hundred of those telemetry things, and I don't. Even I, remember I have like I no telemetry is because I'm not generating them. Like or there's a mod. There's the... a mod to do it. There's a mod to do it at an enhanced rate. Just don't mm -hmm. bother with them. Yeah. No. But yeah, no, you're totally overall, right. I, c I can see like removing certain things. Weapon parts, he says, oh, I have two, two, 22,000 of these. There has to be a better use the, for them than random spamming. Well, no, like people are random spamming them to try and get, you know, a god roll true prophecy. I mean, that, that's, that's the thing true... is that it's a load of parts, right? Mm -hmm. How would you, like, you, you, like, this, this is this has nothing to do with like how the natural system stuff works. But if you just dump a massive pile of parts on Bunchy's desk and tell him I want you to build this, how the hell is he gonna do it? Mm. But if you if you like put a put a row of parts out on the desk and go, just make something with those. Like to be honest, do. to be honest, with regards to this, the weapon parts thing, five hundred weapon parts to target farm a single drop from Banshee or something. I can get behind that. Maybe not um maybe not five hundred, maybe more something along the lines of a thousand or two. But I could get behind that. I don't know why, but I can't hear a thing. Uh <laughs> I I don't know what's going on there, five. Um I've tried uh, Have you got the tab so muted? Is the tab muted, or is the slider down at the bottom, or... Because the, it, it is coming through to the stream, because I've, I've just double-checked then, and I can hear all of us through the thing. But, uh, <laughs> that, is, that is troubling. I just realised we're talking to him here, and if he can't hear us... Yeah, it's... that's why I typed it. Um, yeah. But yeah, th there's certain <laughs> things within here I agree with. There's certain things I'm like, eh. Uh, they're not really completely useless. They might be useless to cer a certain number of players. Somebody who, like, makes a living off of the thing. Like, he makes a living writing articles about Destiny. Yeah. yeah. It'll, yeah. Be use it'll be useless. Useful. Like, these are useless. These are these parts. But there are people who are maybe... Who use them, yeah. Like me. I consider myself hardcore in time. Like, yeah. the amount of time I've put into Destiny since, you know, I've come back to it in Season of Arrivals, I am a hardcore player. But you look at my, re like my inventory for my, my resources, do I have um, 10 oh, Ascendant yeah, like, Shards? I, I have a dire lack of golf balls. Yeah, do I have 10 Ascendant <laughs> Shards on mm -hmm. each character? You know, in my Postmaster, do I have 10... In my inventory, am I complaining that, you know, I need to spend them to, like, no. And that's, that's another thing. Am so I doing GMs and stuff? They no. They me with their names. Cores, shards, and prisms. They're labelled wrong. Mm. Like, the, the golf ball is mm -hmm. obviously a core. The shard is, well, I mean, you can see it as a shard. I mean, yeah, the, 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 what's, is it shards is the second one up? Yeah, it's cores, then shards, and yeah. prisms. But the one, the, the middle one is very clearly a prism. You can see it in the icon. No, the middle one is prism. That's, <laughs> it's, it's... Yeah. Cores Legend. and shards the wrong way around. Yeah. So, cores, shards... Uh, cores, prism, shards. Like a a, a core code. is, like, something you have, like, in the middle of it. That's, like, the yeah. main bit. And a shard is, like, a little piece. So why, why are they... You know... But, I mean, um... I, I get that, like... Because I think was it uh, the shard, the ascendant shard was in D one, with yeah. a similar or the same icon. We'll move. So we'll I, move I, I on to the same. Uh, right. Um, yes. Uh, from one exotic hammer to the next exotic hammer th <laughs> uh, theory. This leads on from um, obviously we've got the hammer that we smash open the chest with at the end of the battlegrounds. Yeah. Okay. Um, so clearly, like, they have the model and they have the animation and everything for you swinging down with the hammer. Um, and if you then also tie that in with a previous tweet, uh, which isn't on screen, but we'll probably get it on screen later on. Um, it is it is tagged in this. Um, when we first saw this tweet in the end of January, I pointed out 
this last line? As because I remember pointing that out because we were going through this and it was a team of wary feedback around three peaking and everything. No promise. They're still investigating changes. They've been investigating changes. They've looked at some changes since. They're going to be looking more again for future updates and stuff. Um, but with with Cosmo uh, in this tweet saying it's a complicated issue that affects emotes, swords, and any potential future third person weapons. At the moment, we don't have third person weapons that you can equip that aren't swords. Like, if you think about, like, if you're doing it in, P in PvP, if you're doing, like, trials or whatever, the only thing you can have third person with that isn't emoting is a sword. You can't have, like, a scorch cannon or whatever. It's just not in the mode. Mm -hmm. So what third person weapons are they planning? Um, and if you just pair, the, if, you, if you pair that tweet and, obviously, the, the model of the hammer and everything, they're thinking that we might have it's a theory, obviously, that's why it says the theory at the end. But the by the end of the season, or leading into the next season, we might have an equipable version of the hammer as a heavy weapon. Yeah. yeah I mean, like, once it's all be... fully gilded and decorated and everything. Um, yeah, I mean... And it might be, like, a gift to us from Keitel or something that we take from her when we, like, do whatever at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think, I mean, I think I as well, to take, to take it back to... Um, you know, the fact that Kytles took over the Twitter account, I think that's partially leading up to the strike because the new yeah. strikes released next week. The is season pass, the week after season pass holders yeah. is next week, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, and then the week after it goes nightfall and everyone gets it. Yeah, um, so I think that's probably leading up to that because. Uh, one of the tweets that she put out recently um, was like, sort of, essentially, it's a, this is your last chance, you know, bow. Um, so, I don't know. But it seems like the the structured tweets about, from her are getting more annoyed with the fact that Guardians aren't bowing. You know what I mean? Yeah. As we're going towards that strike. It's, it's very fast paced. Um, it's sort of like you would expect those thoughts to progress week by week rather than day by day. Mm -hmm. But given that like you can't have the character in control of the account for like the entire season leading up to the, the strike. I mean, you probably could, but people will start getting bored of it after a few weeks. Um, <laughs> then, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, obviously it's, it's faster paced. But yeah, he... he but, yeah. Um... He might even mention it in this article, but I think I've seen the video from him. This, not this one, uh, but basically his thoughts on the hammer thing. It might have been another video from somebody else. Um, but they basically said Bungie are the ones that came up with the Thunder Hammer. Not was it the Thunder Hammer? Fuck, I'm forgetting the, the name. Gravity Hammer. Gravity Hammer. Thank you. Um, oh yeah, I think it was mentioned in, in this in Halo. Well. Mm -hmm. Like, hello. <laughs> if they know, if you know anything about Bungie, they, they I mean, they did the energy sword and then yeah, yeah. Destiny had sword. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, here it is. Uh, Bungie, of course, also has experience designing hammers for first person shooters with Halo's famed gravity hammer. Not that I'd expect the hammer improving to function the same way, but I mean, I wouldn't say no to sending a centurion flying across the map either. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. What you what's know, the uh, shield boys? Take... Oh, the phalanxes. Phalanxes, yeah. yeah. Oh, they phalanxes. send us flying across yeah. the fucking yeah. map often yeah. enough. Yeah. Well, we've we've got we've got a finisher that uses their shield. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and they've even like you could uh, kind of go look back to Destiny One too, like in the um, uh, the Rise of Iron expansion. We you know, had the axes. Like, yeah. Yeah, axe, we had yeah. the axes, and you know, theoretically, like. They could just use those animations and turn it into a big hammer, um, which I think we already use. Cause I think, I it's think the same animation as the. It might be the same animation that we use Titans. as Smash. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the uh, Titan Super as well, yeah. I if think not, as well. Yeah. I... Um, yeah. That if you remember correctly, <laughs> See, we how we've got one. the how we've got the swords now. Um, you know, you go to the Cosmodrome, 
and you've got the hive swords around. You go to the earth, uh, the moon even, and you've got the hive swords that you use in, you know, Sorrow's Harbor. Those swords originally came with, um, uh, Dark Below. Uh, like, just before Ooh, Dark Below, we had the whole lead up to, um, Crota coming and we had the swords. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Obviously, we had the the axes formed. Uh, you were used in a similar sort of way in Rise of Iron. They weren't a, an equipable weapon. They were a out in the world weapon that you picked up. Maybe, mm -hmm. as you said, Seth, they could do something similar because that's what they did with the hive swords. They turned them into you know the exotic swords we had in Destiny One. Then we had legendary swords in you know. Destiny 2 sort of mm -hmm. Forsaken era uh, is when they came in, if I remember correctly, when the whole shift happened from double primary. Um, and then, you know, maybe, yeah, they could turn around and go, okay, well, we've got the, the animations already in the game because of the Titan Super and potentially, and the Hammer of Proving Smashing the Gates. Um, mm -hmm. Do you know what? Let's just make a ha that Hammer, the Hammer of Proving, an exotic. Because they did it in Destiny 1 with, like I said, you had the Hive Swords, then turned into, in Taken King, the Exotic Swords, we had one of each element. And they were all exotic. Maybe they do the same thing with the Hammer. Maybe it, it won't be, you know, different elements. Maybe it's only going to be one element. And I would love to see it be um, Solar, personally, because, you know, Solar Shields for Centaurians. Um, a cabal hammer. Yeah, I think that makes, makes a lot sense. of sense. Um, yeah, yeah cabal cabal melee stuff seems to be more solar than than not. But yeah, I personally, I think this theory could have a lot of weight, and I really hope it has <laughs> a lot of weight. Yeah, same. Yeah. I, you know, I there's part of me that kind of has my wish list. Like I would, I'd they need they in, you know, there needs to be a refresh. Big old Mm -hmm. yeah like big old hammer or you know even like the big axe from rise of iron like you know they could do something kind of similar with that um or even if you know maybe fingers crossed one day they went into like smaller weapons so say like if we had a exotic i don't know even like energy weapon or heavy weapon that was two daggers um say if you ran around with a couple daggers then you could have your own animation for that or something but um I think they could keep expanding on the uh, the melee weapons in the game just to keep refreshing it. And, and yeah, whatnot. for sure. I, yeah, I love the different archetypes of swords that they had in uh, year one and year two um, with the, the class swords. You know, so like the Titans had their, their special big beefy claymore and oh, the Warlock ones. Yes, kind of I forgot about those. Sad. But yeah, then you got, you know, like Quick Fang or Gold Tusk for the Hunters. And like, I, re I really enjoyed just kind of the RPG element of having the the different types of swords and how they play differently. Like hunters were little invisible ninjas and Titans were the big beefy knights swinging around a gigantic sword and warlocks were well, they were See, doing what everybody does. But at swords, this, but... at this point, they pretty <laughs> much force you to have all three. If you want to, mm -hmm. you know, power level efficiently because yeah. you know, you do your, your hunter pinnacles. If you've got a second hunter, it doesn't give you pinnacles. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like they could potentially bring stuff like Quick Fang back in, but don't make it class specific. Make it class specific in that yeah. you can only have a chance of doing a specific activity on a hunter, mm -hmm. and so it will you unlock. Can only earn it on the class. Yeah, you can unlock it on. Quick anywhere. Yeah, so you could unlock <laughs> Quick Fang doing a specific activity on a hunter, but then you could take it over to your Titan mm -hmm. and turn your big beefy tank into a swift killing machine i would love it yeah that that would be amazing so and this sort of thing is uh like i'm 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 very into swords like i'm not a great drawer by any sense of the imagination but <laughs> uh, i had a friend in secondary school uh which is our like version of high school um over here in the uk to the point where some of our secondary schools are called high schools. Um, That's what mine calls itself. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> basically, 
like I had a couple of friends that were twins um who were very good at drawing both of them one was like good at drawing people one was good at drawing um sort of people people featured animals so you know stuff like sonic oh. sonic but they designed oh, okay. they designed their own um oh, that's cool and one of them uh, the one that draw pictures um uh, of animals that you know had human human like what's the word Philos philosophy whatever it is the fucking um, physiological physic yeah, physical yeah. You know, body. Mm -hmm. uh, I forget oh, the word. Yep. Yeah. Take there you go. Something to making it look more human. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the one who drew creatures like Sonic, essentially, they were wanting to do a sword for their particular character, and I was like, I've been drawing swords just recently because I was dead into Warhammer as a kid, um, and Dark Angels being my uh my army they're big into swords and they have like you know individually contoured sword endings and etc etc so i was like trying to draw different sort of combinations of those swords and getting better at it um and so she asked me she turned around and says oh just uh draw me one or two and i'll pick one and you know i'll get you to draw it on if on it if i like it i was like all right so she drew up the picture I drew up a couple of swords, and um, she turned around and went, "You know what? I like them all." Um, <laughs> and because I'd drawn like three, she was like, "I want all three of them on it." She says, "I don't know how. I don't know how you're going to put them on. Uh, I don't care how you, how you put them on, but please put them in the picture. I want I want him to look badass. Uh, is this char her character Sparky?" I was like, "Okay." And so I, I like drew these uh, swords on, and that's like been my thing. So swords are like a big part of me, like growing up. I've loved them. I've got a kind of a fascination with them. So when I saw like all the different designs that the Bungie have got with the swords, you know, the quick fang, uh, the claymores, as you mentioned, like mm -hmm. melee weapons in a general, I'm just like, yeah, we need more. We need more yeah. variety. It can't just mm -hmm. be okay. There's a sword because even like the difference between um just to go to arrivals for instance there was two swords you know mm -hmm. temptations hook and fallen guillotine guillotine mm -hmm. and hook both had different powered um attacks you know obviously being different frames whirlwind and caster mm -hmm. uh but their generic oh i'm just going to hit you animation was exactly the same um their idle yeah. animation exactly the same like so there's not really all that much different in the sword do you know mm -hmm. what i mean and i feel like a hammer yeah like you said a couple of daggers maybe um some sort of dual wield system uh with mm -hmm. regards to swords could potentially change that up i mean they could take inspiration from their existing supers because at the moment you've got like you've, you've got like just swords and you have a super that uses swords we've got hunter super that uses daggers so if they mm -hmm. need to they can like borrow or repurpose some animations from that. exactly that's where i was going with this <laughs> we've got yeah you know we've got different titan hammers we've got like little hammers we've got the big massive one I would love yeah. for there to be the, um, you know, how we've got the different classifications of swords, different, you know, caster, whirlwind, yeah. um, and then just the straight, like, the normal ones that do uppercut. Mm -hmm. I would love for there mm -hmm. to be different classifications of hammer. Heavy hammer, basically middle tree uh, solar hammers on a titan, yeah? It's well, one like hammer the, that's uh, huge, effect. and it takes, yeah. it takes, you know forever and a day to swing it but you deal a shit ton of damage um mm -hmm. and then yeah. combine the other two quick hammers oh guess what i've now got two of them and i'm coming in it at you to just melee you're not gonna throw them <laughs> but you know they could be the size of the throwable melee 
of mm-hmm. middle tree hammers, but two of them, one in each hand, and you just run in and start hitting things, kind of like a uh, Hotter Super for middle tree void. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Stuff because like then, technically, yeah. you wouldn't need the daggers. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they could do like even uh, just expanding on the role playing more. Like, if you wanted to make, you know, kind of like your quintessential tank character, you could have like a a big bulwark shield. Um, yeah, that it could go into heavy shield. Spot. And yeah, or not even like if they wanted to make it even more simple, like you literally just had one very big gigantic wall of a shield that you held up. And, you know, the more you blocked with it, that would be what took down your quote-unquote ammo or energy or whatever for it. Um, and, you know, that'd be kind of cool. Or, you know, like what you were saying with the subclasses, like, we could have a pole arm also because of, you know, Arc Strider. They're running around exactly. people with that pole. Yeah, all sorts of stuff. Like, I, I would love if they expanded the melee weapons in the game. It'd be, it'd be so much fun. I've just thought um, it might not be, it wouldn't really fit with the way the game is now. But you know how they were saying that they were looking at different, like, MMO-type things mm-hmm. and trying to fit more, like, RPG-style things in while still being, like, a looter shooter type sort of fusion. At the moment, not re- fairly recently, they've added sort of, like, different properties to the weapons um, that you can now do through, like, the mods and stuff, you know, for, like, staggering or, like, piercing through barriers and things. Yeah. Well... You could then extend that to the types of melee weapon, because obviously a sword would inherently do better at slicing through a shield, but then something like a hammer or whacking them with a great big shield would stun. Yeah, so unstoppable. Then mm-hmm. then you could do... doesn't really do much for the overload from any of the melee weapons, but no. then you would the melee weapon. Yeah but, then you could, yeah, but then you could have a gun for an overload. Because they're teleporting yeah. all over the place, you're not really going to get close enough. <laughs> yeah. Right. <Like, laughs> yep. Let's put it that way. Okay. Uh. So let's. Because we're. I'm conscious on time. We're like 20 speed, minutes. Speed it up. But speed also it up. Slow it right down. Uh. <laughs> I'm gonna just we'll speed through these right two, right and then I these two, and then I'll ask your two things on them. Uh. Just so we can sort of get to the swab and have it up ready to go. Well, this one's sort of very, very quick. Yeah. Um, while the topic itself is slow, there is a way to kill Tanix, um, the raid boss from Deepstone Crypt, uh, without doing any of his normal phases. But it is very, very... Basically, you take something like... Uh, Nova Bomb's a really good example. Something where you would ha- fire a projectile, and then when the projectile deals damage, you're dead. So if you die before the damage is dealt, it actually applies. So if you fire a slow bomb and jump off the edge, or if you have a rocket with the lasting lasting impression, that's the one, thank you. Um, if you fire that and jump off the edge, if you're dead when that blows up, it deals damage to them. And you can just keep doing that, get your teammates to res you and stuff. Um, and then when you go and he jumps out of the pile of scrap like he normally does, he'll be on his last stand mechanic pretty much straight away mm. if you've dealt enough damage. Um, but from what I've seen in like the comments and stuff, it seems to take anywhere between six and eight times as long as just doing the mechanic legit. Yeah. So like, yes, you can do this, but it's not really worth it. Unless you're running it with people and you have some major issues with the actual mechanic, which yeah, is impressive which... because to get to that stage, you've had to use the mechanic. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, and then the next one is Content Vault. They go on about, you know, solo uh, yes, challenges. Yes. The, 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 act, the actual thing is pretty long, but the only bit we're interested in is, like, um, they were talking about adding to and pulling from the, the DCV. Um, so it's way down. That the highlighted bit here was um, the bit that was, like, uh, thinking bigger picture at the start of year four, you vault a bunch of planets um, and stuff. Um, and it was justified with metrics and stuff. Um, yeah. So you were saying, um, Justin Truman, I uh, don't know his exact role. I It'll really probably stay that. up here. It probably will say somewhere up there or somewhere at the bottom. Um, you know, it's when we think about the DCV, we're definitely thinking about the long term health of Destiny. I, I don't want to, as a player, log into a director that has 20 planets on it crowding up the entire screen. Bungie General Manager. Bungie General Manager, okay. 
Um, and he said with Beyond Light there was a compression where we get back to what they think is the ideal di director size and that they want to kind of stay around that size. So obviously as they, if they add more things coming out of the vault, like more destinations and stuff, some other things will have to go back in to make space. Um, and there's going to be some tough decisions as to what leaves. And no matter what it is that leaves, people aren't going to be happy about it. Yeah, to be fair, I think a lot of people are worried that it's going to be um, Forsaken content and Shadowkeep content. Oh, you know, uh, like last week. A lot of people are highlighting those because of what he says here. Um, so the, I can't remember who it was that was doing the interview with them, uh, mentions the surprise and amount of nostalgia for Destiny and going back to the Cosmodrome and re revisiting spaces. Um, when it comes to vaulting content, how do you judge it so you're not vaulting things too soon? Um, and it says things like Forsaken content will be vaulted at some point. You know, in the same way we don't want eight raids, it's the same thing with storylines. You don't want new players coming in and having five different competing storylines. They could start playing any one of them in and they don't know what order they're in. Mm. Not necessarily that they don't know what order in, but they could be like some of them, like for example, Aldrin, in one of them is a good guy be... and in one of them is a bad guy and it's not clear. Yeah, and are. to be honest, I think um, a quick way to sum, sum this up is each DLC that, like, let's say Witch Queen arrives and they go, okay, Forsaken's being vaulted because Crow is now a good guy and we don't, and you know, as it says here, we don't want them confused. We don't want new players confused. Do a video, a cutscene that basically says at the beginning of the New Light campaign, here's the Destiny story so far. This is what we've done. We've killed gods. We, we killed, well, we killed a prince of the hive. His dad was pissed, came, and he's a god. So, you know, we had to kill him in the real world. Then we had to go and fucking kill him in his own throne world. Guess what? He's fucked. He's dead. Bye bye, Horrocks. Get out of here. We've killed a, a, a nanite infused fallen that was trying to become a machine god. You know. Aldrin was a bad guy. He got corrupted by Riven, but we saved him by killing him. <laughs> um, he was then resurrected by the light. He is now the crow. Boom. Here's what happened in Shadowkeep. Here's what happened in Beyond Light. And here's where we start you as a brand new guardian. Here you go. Like, yeah. 10, 10 minutes, maybe? Right there. People are going to listen to the lore. Uh, that we've had so far and go, ooh, this is actually like really interesting. Oh, you know. And then even if the new light quest at the beginning of the game, although I haven't played it yet, a lot of people have said it's a lot better than it was back in Destiny 2 Vanilla and a lot better than it was in Destiny 1, but it's a lot of the Destiny 1 stuff uh, in that, you know, you spawn out in the Cosmodrome, you come back, you find it... Uh, this time you find shorthand instead of ship, blah, 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 blah. But um, the point being, if they see the, the, the new light quest then doesn't have to be as enticing as people are saying it needs to be to draw in new players because they've already had like five, ten minutes of here's the law so far. Here's what you need to know about the world you're stepping into. Here's what guardians before you have achieved. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Players are then more likely to go, oh, wow, you know, there's this god thing that came to seek revenge and the guardians that came before me killed him. Oh, I want to do that. Like, that, that's, my, that's my goal. I'm going to get to that level. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think so, it's definitely a balancing act for them. With yeah, I and they they know the, it's a balancing act itself. Yeah, um, I think one of the hard things with the like you said with Shadow Keep and Forsaken is those were paid DLCs, and so you know like people are going to be upset if they paid for something and now it's gone that they can't access it anymore. Um, which you know, what do you do at that point if you're Bungie? Like, I could if see you, so say like if if they're doing like really like foundational structural updates to the game like on the game engine level. Like, if they need to make those to Forsaken, like, it can't really be a playable space while they're making those changes. Mm. And so, 
um you know do they make it so one some kind of so like one thing really i will say down version mm-hmm. personally is um warmind and curse of osiris were also pay content when the game went mm-hmm. free to play they inc- they you know encompassed those storylines as well as the you know the vanilla storyline in the free to play model mm-hmm. there was all the raids were basically free to play except last wish and um garden until you know beyond light took them all away yeah now on xbox you know if you have game pass the game's free like in general you can play everything but playstation don't have that luxury and neither does pc so my my thoughts would be if you are going to get rid of forsaken let's say lightfall it comes out like lightfall comes out and forsaken's gone it's vaulted yeah when witch queen releases you make forsaken free to play that means anybody who buys the who doesn't buy the game and is just you know playing free to play model of the of the game can access all of the forsaken content not just the patrol space Mm-hmm. I personally yeah, would not have a problem with that. But if you just turn around and go like a one release yeah, cycle. One release cycle mm. and then Lightfall comes out, you turn around and go, right, well, when the new chapter that they agna- announced in the state of the game comes, um Shadowkeep is gone. Mm-hmm. So Lightfall comes out, Shadowkeep is free to play. And it's just Knock on, knock on, knock on, knock on. So if they do any more DLCs after this next chapter, after Lightfall, Beyond Light becomes free. Blah blah blah. So mm-hmm. you're good. You're a good three years behind if you're going to just play the story on the free to play model and not buy it at all. But at the same time, those who do pay for it get three years where they can get their money's worth. And mm-hmm. not feel like you know Bungie is taking sure. their money for a ride, essentially. So oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, no, but I on that note, agree with that. we have mm-hmm. ten minutes before our usual a lot of time is up. So we'll quickly <laughs> go through the the twab um, as they're prepping for Grandmasters. Uh, strike difficulty is set to thirteen fifty. Minimum power required is 1325. Contest is enabled, so even if you're higher than 1325, you'll be capped at 1325. Uh, strike uh, modifiers, which we all know. Grandmaster Nightfall will be oh, one a week until so April 20th. Starting April, April 20th, you have the opportunity to blaze through all of them in a direct launch playlist, which we've got already. You just can't access it. Um, if you miss a week, the final three weeks of the season are your opportunity to catch up. And then obviously we'll have the adept versions of Swarm, Paladrome, and Shadow Pride. Uh, Gemini BNG. Oh yeah, this is the Gilded uh, system. They're putting a number next to it. A lot of people are saying if you could keep the Guild season to season and then depending on how many times you Guild it each like season the number goes up then they'd be more pleased with this but i've got people who i know who have gilded dredgen already saying literally there's no point because next season they take it away whereas if next season they could still have the gilded dredgen and it would just say gilded one you know as it says here conqueror with the number two it just had one and then they gilded it again next season and it went up to two and they didn't feel the need to have to gild it every season then they would feel more like that's See, a worthy at, at grind. The, minute, sort of thing. the way it looks like they're doing it is the number of times it's gilded rather than the season in which you gilded it. Yeah. So if you if you gild it this season and then don't for another three seasons and then gild it again, you'll have a two on the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what they're saying, but you have to re-earn the guild. They're saying if they could have the guild, so next season if they decided not to gild it, it would still say one. 
Right. But in actuality, it's not like that. Next season, it will just say dredge, and there will not be a number next to it. Until you guild it again, in yeah. which case it will then be two, because you guilded. Yeah, I think... Yep. I think they should let you keep the gilded version on if you've got one or more previous gilded. Okay, so preview patch notes for 16th of March. You know, Fallen Saber's getting a bunch of fixes. Uh, so is Devil's Slayer. Um, fix an issue where an overload patch could spawn. Um, yep. armor, linear accurate actuators perk for Doom Archers is getting fixed. Uh, font oh, of might. Great. This no longer displays generic damage boost string when the benefits are active. Fix the bug where mantle of battle harmony and omni. Om never say the fucking hunter exotic <laughs> name. Omni Oculus. That's it. <laughs> uh, exotics were not displaying their flavor text. I didn't know that was a bug. Me neither. Not uh, that means um, the end of the armor. Om Omni Op. Oh, no, 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 no. The one below it. Yeah, I know. Uh, no longer grant melee energy when making only yourself invis under some circumstances. And then the Curious of Falling Star no longer grants an overshield when used with supers other than. Really? Okay, yeah, that's that weird. Was a bug. I think. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a bug. Video I didn't, about I didn't that, realize about that like that was happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Ooh. If I remember in the video, I saw if you cast, if even if it wasn't thunder crash, if you cash, cast oh. the super while you were in the air. Oh, that's not when, good. Adjusted visual yeah. visual risk runner perk. Uh, adjusted risk runner perk visual effect that were causing epileptic issues. Oh yeah, that that needs fixing. If, it, if it's if it's doing that, that needs to be changed. <laughs> Reduced arbalist aim assist. Finally. <laughs> I mean, as March twenty third. Very average PVP player, I will say the arbalist oh. one was a little ridiculous. I I pulled off some headshots <laughs> I had no business in getting. Uh yeah, basis. Balancing is slated for March third, uh, twenty third. Even as Kit said, we get the not just this week. Um, insight we get next week as well. Obviously, they're going over what they're going to do with um, basis balancing. So they're removing damage resistance from Shatter Dive. Added a four second cooldown between activations. Wither and Blade decreased the damage from ninety, which they've only just against players. They've only just changed this 90 to 65, but the PVE damage is unchanged. That's good because it makes it still usable. Um, and also decrease the slow stack slide from 60 to 40. So instead of times 6, you'll get times 4. Okay. So it will now take two of those and a dodge. Just freeze you rather than just two of them. But which if you is get hit with good. Both of them, you will be very slow. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. PVE stats so are still un back. are unchanged as well. Again, makes them still usable in PVE. Um, these are just PVE changes. Yeah. PVE is not a change with these, which is good. Decrease the target acquisition. So essentially, tracking. I, I oh, assume between everyone. Yeah. Uh, from twelve to eight. Uh, obviously, that's when it ricochets off of a wall. Uh, they're removing the AOE freeze against players on supercast. Uh, it will still work in PvE. But will still work in PvE, which is great. Although, I do feel like this uh, freeze on Supercast allowed for some great counterplay. Like, I've seen Karma, um, because obviously Stasis Titan being so oppressive, using it, and people were going, Aha! I've got a Dawnblade. And Karma's like, Aha! I freeze you instantly when I cast my Super. Like, it's great counterplay, so I don't like this change so much, so I, I'd have to see it and and use it and feel how it, how it diff you know what I mean, if it actually makes that much of a difference. Um, the damage resistance needed to change. Fox 60% to 50, though, it needs to be, like, 40 or 30. Like, ridiculous how much damage it can take uh, before... 
the same with this. Silver Strike taking only 3%, now taking up 7. It doesn't even look like it takes any on 3%. So 7's, what, double? Just over double. I think it's not going to feel that much different. Yeah. Um, Using a combo, a Shiver Strike into a Heavy Slam will now cost full super energy for both. Only cost the energy for Slam. And then Shiver Strike, uh, increased downwards velocity applied to Shiver Striking players. Uh, when they are slowed, pull them out of the air more strong. I don't really get that. So let's say I'm a missile titan and I'm in midair and I get frozen. I'll fall quicker. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. 2.2 seconds. Yeah, all changes yeah. to the. To be honest, Warlock Stasis is a throw right now. So if, as long as they're making it more balanced with these, as they're bringing the other two down, they're bringing this up a little bit to make it not as oppressive as it was for when it first launched. Mm -hmm. And they, across the board, Stasis feels more balanced. I'll be happy. And I'm sure a lot of the PvP players uh, will feel uh, a lot better. Uh, they're also yeah, doing... Sure. Balance changes to the radius of dust field, although PVE is unchanged. Yes, that is something that I've been calling for for so long. Nine and a half meters was too far when the field does not even reach anywhere near that range. Um, yeah. Reducing the slow stack applied on the grenade detonation from 20 to 10. I don't think that was necessary, to be honest, but... We'll well, it, it you know how it comes up slowed times. Yeah, yeah. It comes up times two. Like, nah, times one is enough. I think by the time you mm -hmm. get out of it, a lot of the time people are in the middle and they get out of it and just get frozen right on the edge because of the nine point five. Yep. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah, exactly. I feel like mm -hmm. this probably there might be something that they revert, but. Again, it probably could have kept the grenade detonation application on because they've halved the number of per tick stacks. Yeah. So you've got like twice as much time to get out of the effective radius if you get caught in it. Um, and then fragments are also being changed. Stasis crystals reduce crystal damage, shatter damage. It's players from 85 max 55 min, 55 max 25 PvE is changed. So, long story short, it's going to take two crystals to kill you. So, basically, if, you, if you're if you near the crystals, you won't take as much damage. But hey, if you're caught in dinosaurs won. All of them blowing up right on top of you will kill you. <laughs> they vote in hordes, Bob. The the movie yeah, monsters the dinosaurs vs dinosaurs dinosaurs won so there yeah. you go seth Just... you get your dinosaurs <laughs> Heck yeah i want dinosaurs i'm excited um one thing real quick before you wow. get stasis stuff is they like did, brackets there. um they did give chaos reach just a very slight nerf um along with the stasis tuning um and i think it's just because of how chaos reach has it's become more part of the memo oh yeah, yeah. Decrease yeah. the amount of super energy um, refunded for cancelling it early. Yeah, which is fine. I've actually, during... I've that been is, watching... That's the thing, isn't it? Is you, people would pop mm -hmm. it, get one kill, and then cancel straight away. Yeah, and I mean, I definitely did that too. I think I've been watching conversations in Discord as, after the TWAP came out, and people are making some points about, you know, yeah. it, it might have been Geomegs that really needed the nerf and not necessarily the Chaos Reef as a base. Yeah. yeah. I mean, cause to the... be quite honest as well, as somebody who mains Chaos Reach since uh, the founder of Favored Athematic and uh, <laughs> Noise Tank, if you know who mm -hmm. that is, um, put me onto it because it was Noise that put Hath onto it. Um, mm -hmm. I put uh, my mine and Kit's friend Hans and Bean onto it. I, I said, look, mm -hmm. this is like OP as shit because of them two guys i ag kind of agree in the sense of geomags probably does need a little bit of a nerf i don't think it should be 80 percent of the super 
and then mm-hmm. you start running to get it back, I think it should be like 85 or 90, maybe. Yeah. Um, yep, exactly. Mm-hmm. But then I'm also of the mind of I wasn't using Chaos Reach as a, okay, there's a big group of enemies, let me go and murder them all. Uh, occasionally, yeah, I would in sixes as a, as like a laugh. But in things like mm-hmm. trials, when me, Kit, and Hans stepped into trials, Kit will tell you I used it maybe once to win us around, but for the most part, I was using it to counter stasis time, or yeah, exactly, or dawn blades. So yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's the apparently there's a result an issue with Connex P. Prestige Scannable. Uh, yeah. Right, so, so the Prestige Scannables, I was going through and looking earlier today, and I was like, why Why is there nothing new this week to interact with? And I might have missed something last week or the week before, and because I didn't get all of them, the new ones haven't come in. Ah. Uh, but that's mm-hmm. the hidden Scannables rather than the data pads. The data pads are still working. Like, yeah. I've got a new one. I had a new one of those today when I did it compared to last week. You see, I I will openly admit this week I really haven't played all that much of this. <laughs> like I've played Apex I've so much. much today. I've I've played very little in general. Not even just Destiny, just games at all. Yeah. Compared to to other weeks. But yeah, that that right there is the the twab as well. Um. One thing I will also put out there for anybody who might be interested in um, potentially getting better at PvP, there are two people that I follow. Obviously, one more closer than the other uh, because that particular person is the founder of Favored, and I've mentioned him already, Pathmatic. Um, oh. And then the other one is uh, one that most people oh, will okay. know, oh, which oh. is Ascendant oh. Nomad. They are both doing sort of helpful tips and tricks, uh, like videos and stuff. So the thing oh, cool. that Kath sort of done, he put the first one out um, on Wednesday. He sort of takes his own footage of a 1v3 situation in survival and sort of breaks it down. And then he's, gonna, and he, he's, done a, he's doing a YouTube video for it. Uh, which goes live on Sunday. Um, and he's calling it the film room. And it's Destiny PvP coaching. Ascendant Nomad is doing Crucible School. Um, where he just goes over like the fundamentals of Crucible. And trying to get better at it. So I, I think that would help me. To you, two uh, people that have got games. useful content that's coming out, if people want to go and check them out, um, search Ascendant Nomad. Uh, most people know who he is uh, on YouTube. And then Kath is putting uh, like below a minute quick videos on twi- Twitter for these uh, film schools. But then he's also you know linking to a YouTube video when it goes live um, later in the week. Although I think looking at our content um, creation ch- channel in the clan discord, I think he may be on about sort of releasing them on uh, the same schedule. So search Hathematics, uh, which I'll put a put, um, just search him on Twitter, and if you need to know how to spell it real quick, if you're in the chat live, it's isn't it an L instead of an I? Not anymore. Um, not anymore. Ooh. Okay. He's got an uh, underscore instead. Sure. So. It was an L instead of an I. It's easy to remember now. Yeah. So it is literally half H A. T H. I'm I'm gonna read this because obviously there's gonna be people who are listening to the podcast uh, and watching on YouTube that won't have this information. But anybody who's watching live, you can see his link at the top of the uh, clan streams command I've just put in chat. Um, it's H A T H E 
M A T I C S underscore. Um, I think that's the same on Twitter. Let me double check real quick. No, it is just at Hatomatic. So it's the same, but without the um, without the underscore. Uh, on Twitter. So if you want to go and follow him on Twitter, then obviously when he does post the link to whatever YouTube video, you'll you'll get it right there. But um, that basically covers the the, the podcast. Uh, the link to Seth's Twitch um, will be in the description of the YouTube video. And I'm sure you'll probably put it in some sort of description on the podcast platform. Yeah, more than likely. Uh, probably. Um, <laughs> Good but for me. Seth, yeah. it, <laughs> on the off chance that he doesn't, if you want to give a little uh, bit of a spiel, oh, yeah. kind of like what you did at the beginning uh, of where people can find you when you are like live, or if they want to like catch up with you on Twitter or whatever, uh, and go oh, yeah. just quickly yeah. go right ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, best way is probably Twitter. Uh, it's at cephalopod st for saint. Um, it would be the Twitter handle, and I have links to everything on there. Uh, if you want to find me on Twitch directly, it's uh, st underscore cephalopod on Twitch. Uh, I don't stream all that often, but uh, when I do, it's pretty casual, uh, always for fundraising. Uh, there you go. Uh, thanks for having me on, guys. Really appreciate it. Yeah, we, no we, problem. It's it, was, been a while. it was a pleasure, but I'm sure. Um, I've already got a raid target in mind. Wonderful. Wow, we're really getting ahead of ourselves tonight. Yeah, uh, and I've had, I've had a raid target <laughs> in mind for about an hour. Uh, <laughs> That's good. He's currently doing a DSC. He's at the fr- he's basically me when I was looking to get my affiliate. He's got his follower threshold. He needs the average viewers. So oh, I'd appreciate it if everybody could give him a hand. Uh, it's somebody yeah. I actually met through Baggy, uh, Baggy Noodle Arms, who's a member of Favored. Uh, actually, Hathmatics right hand man and admin of Favored. Um, and then you've got Supreme, who's like a left hand man, if you want to call him that. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, Noob IRL. But yeah, it's been a pleasure to have you on, Seth. Um, like I said, I'd, uh, I wanted to get you on as soon as I heard, like, basically the entire reason that you stream is more uh, to raise money for charities that are important, like, you know, Extra Life and the Games Forgive. So, mm-hmm. um, and then obviously the fact that you do it mostly around destiny and you're very knowledgeable of the game and enjoy it um helps a lot considering what podcast is about (laughs) partly um we 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 covered some twitch we covered some destiny and now we're doing the rising ships yeah there we go trade excellent is there any um any projects you've got coming up that people might need to be aware of seth Oh gosh, uh, not really. Um, you know the the extra life stuff is really just kind of my main focus. Um, and then I need to you know get off my butt and get a little more organized with it, um, just to try to set up incentives and you know a, a better schedule and everything. So I'm not doing it so sporadically. Um, so yeah, uh, I just say like, keep an eye on things. Um, I do have a goal to always you know always try to raise a certain amount every year. So fair enough, uh, and um... I'll, I'll be around. As a question that we sort of uh, and uh, sort of ended up with you as one of the suggestions from Witty, is there anyone you want to see on the podcast um, in future, or if we ask you to come on, who you'd want to come on with? Oh, I know. I I really appreciated you talking about the the Black Lives Matter stuff and um, you know the representation and everything at the beginning of the podcast. I. I was looking through who I follow on Twitch. Um, it's really hard for me to pick just one. I, I would just in more general, like I would say, like anybody that is from, you know, maybe underrepresented community, like, you know, whether it's a, a black content creator or you know any BIPOC creator um, or a female um, or anything like that, or somebody from the LGBTQIA plus community, um, you know, that's all, that's all gravy for me. Like uh, anybody from there would be awesome. I don't know. We'll have to keep our eyes out. 
Um, <laughs> got a fair few people on our list anyway, so mm -hmm. we'll uh, we'll be going through a couple of them. Um, but yeah, again, pleasure having you. Uh, and we appreciate you coming on. Awesome. Yeah, Anything you want to add, quick, Kit? Before I hit the raid command. Just just before we finish up. Uh, yeah. Um, tomorrow or well Friday. We'll have the, uh, the things going on on the podcast platform. So that is like sort of, uh, you know, your, your Amazon Music, your Spotify, TuneIn, uh, Google Podcasts, places like those. Um, I have in the works, it's kind of about 95% done, um, a website you can go to instead. Um, that's kitsnay.enrage.me slash rising lights. That should have, that'll have uh, sort of like little profiles about each of the guests we've had on. Uh, and... Um, uh, where you can listen to it. Okay, so there you go. We will, when it's a bit more like you're happy uh, with I it, will be, we'll be I'll, we'll I'll be linking it. An announcement on Twitter about it. Yeah. Um, so you'll you'll know then. You can start putting the links in and stuff. Okay, okay. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in, hanging out, and uh, you know, watching another or listening to another episode of Rising Lights. Um, I think as well, I'm going to probably put a text channel in my personal discord with regards to the rising lights of like suggestions of maybe people want to suggest people to be on it. They can go into that, um, particular channel. Um, because, you know, there might be people that we don't think of, but you have a connection to that you can turn around and go like, maybe if you talk to this guy and say i sent you they'll come on or this lady you know whoever it may be um but yeah we're going to go and raid noob irl like i said he's going to, he's trying to make a push for affiliate he, he's just i think he needs the average views that's about it um so the only metric that i can think that he needs because he's got like 86 followers um and he's currently doing a dsc with a group of his buds Raid in a raid. What are our messages? Trap. So I am. I am first. Just gonna hit the raid. Oh, I I pressed the wrong. Back in. <laughs> Username. Rip. Control V, and I put nude instead of noob. Oh, that's not good. I mean, it is quarantine. I'm sure there are a few people that are new to that right now. <laughs> right. So, there's the raid command. Um, <laughs> Kirby's laughing. As Kit's just put in my chat, uh, spam the emotes if you've got them. If you don't, you can use channel points to buy them. Um, <laughs> that's the Twitch fan in here. <laughs> and if you don't have the emotes, you just use the Twitch global ones. There we go. Kit's cool. ahead of me. There we go. And uh, again, thank you very much, Seth, for coming on. Thank you very much, everybody, for listening. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Yeah.